All right, well, let's get started with using Pulumi to build cloud infrastructure. We'll start here inside our terminal and just run Pulumi new. When we do this, we see that we have over 200 templates for a wide variety of different use cases for the cloud. We have a variety of cloud providers like Azure, AWS, and a variety of others. And we have to support a number of different languages like TypeScript, Python, Go, .NET, and Pulumi YAML. We also have a variety of different architectures. And so here we see we can deploy a containerized service on Azure using Python. We'll go ahead and give this a name, Pulumi Up 2023. We'll put in some default metadata, and we'll make sure this is running close to us in the West US. This is going to install a bunch of dependencies, just like any normal Python project. But let's go over into VS Code and take a look at what this code looks like. So here we have our code. Just like we mentioned, this is just a normal Python project with a requirements.txt, a virtual environment, and of course, a main.py file. Now, I'll walk through the code in just a second. But first, the one thing that's a bit unusual or new about Pulumi is that instead of just running our Python program as a Python program, we run it using Pulumi up. And that actually allows us to run this in a desired state configuration mode, just like you would with Azure Resource Manager, CloudFormation, Terraform, Kubernetes, or any other infrastructure's code tool. When we run Pulumi up, we see that it first gives a preview. So it runs my code in a mode where I can see what will happen even before I go and deploy this. We see that what will happen is we'll deploy a few resources, a resource group in Azure, a container registry in Azure. We'll build and push a local Docker image, and then we'll run that in Azure Container Instances. We can go ahead and say yes, that we do want to deploy this, and it'll go ahead and start deploying that infrastructure. Now, this will take about a minute to deploy. And so while we wait for it to finish deploying into Azure, let's take a look at the code and some of the benefits we get from Pulumi's infrastructure's code. So the first benefit is that um, because this is just code in uh, an, an existing programming language that has great support within our IDE, we get things like autocomplete and dot completion. We can see all the different APIs that are available, like image, registry image, remote image, and so many more things. We can also see that we can use features like GoToDefinition to dive into that library and understand the details of it. So for example, here we see an overview of how this works, we see examples, and we see the entire set of properties that are available to work with. Now, ID completion like that is one thing, but we also get that quick feedback loop. So for example, if I come up here and make some changes like this, we see that if I have a typo in my code, I immediately get that feedback that there's a problem and I can fix it as I'm going, not having to wait for me to deploy and have that uh, issue affect us later on in the deployment. Similarly, if I type that pass the wrong kind of data in, like I pass a string instead of a Boolean here, we see that we get that feedback immediately. Overall, this provides a much more strongly typed experience where I get great editor and IDE feedback and productivity from that. Now, in this case, we're using the Azure Native Provider, which is a full fidelity mapping of the entire Azure platform into Pulumi. This is something we've worked closely with the Azure team at Microsoft on, uh, and it provides the best possible experience for the Azure platform. And earlier this week, we released Azure Native V2, which provides increased performance and usability features for the Azure Native Provider. This provider offers things that go even further, like enums that tell us all the legal values for this particular setting. So for example, for the SKU on a container registry, we know that there's these exact four values, and if I mistype it, I get that same feedback. So a whole bunch of features to help with productivity. Now, this has gone ahead and finished deploying, and so I can click on this to open it up, and we'll see that our app is now running inside Azure. And so here we go, we're running an application inside Azure Container Instances that shows Hello World. Now, turns out that application was built uh, from this Docker file that's just locally here as part of that template. And so we have this simple Docker file that we were building and pushing locally, and we have the app.py file that we we're running. And so let me make a change to this, and we'll see what happens when we go ahead and deploy that. So if I rerun Pulumi up, we'll see that because Pulumi is an infrastructure's code tool that's using desired state, we're not going to just recreate everything. We're going to figure out what is the minimum change possible to, do, to get to the new state that we want. And it turns out that uh, minimum change is to make two changes to our infrastructure. One is to build and push the new copy of this image, which has that code change I made. And the other one is to update our container instance to run that new code. I go ahead and click details to see exactly what's going to change. And yes, to go ahead and start deploying those updates. Now, this will take a couple minutes, so we won't wait for it to finish. Um, but you get the idea. You can use Pulumi to manage the entire life cycle of your infrastructure's code projects as they evolve over time.